I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places. Oh. That this heart of mine embraces oh. all year through. Oh. Harold, you sigh anymore, and I'm going to be able to set sail on that gust of wind you're blowing. Bread lines increase as more go hungry. <sighs> but you know, June, if President Roosevelt gets this support he needs for this new deal, he might just be celebrating a bit more this Christmas. All those needy folks going hungry, it's such a shame. Seems to me things were never the same after that market crash. <laughs> This town of Bethlehem, last Christmas alone, I think we lost at least five families who seemed to just pack up and move on overnight without just even saying a word. You know, before we know it, this whole town of Bethlehem is going to be packed up and moved on with just hardly nothing left. <laughs> June, it ain't as bad as all that now, is it? We are. <laughs> with Christmas in just under a week, things will be picking up. Families will be getting together. Folks will be coming into town to do their Christmas shopping and to enjoy the annual Christmas festival. You'll see. Yes. Uh, didn't I mention that the mayor himself just today asked me to touch up that old manger set? Oh. Uh, it's going to be right up there on stage with the performers as a focal piece. Okay. <laughs> I love that manger. My grandpappy made it with his own two hands. You never told me that. <laughs> but uh, I don't see how one small job for the mayor is going to get us through to the new year. You know, if things don't pick up soon, uh, I'm afraid we might have to sell the store. I'm just not, I'm afraid we're not going to be able to scrape up enough to make a payment this month is all. Didn't Chef Randall say that he's been looking to expand his lumber and feed next door for the longest time now? Well, maybe. I mean, just maybe. It's time. I mean, we got mouths to feed, and, and clothing a family of five ain't cheap. June, this store has been in my family for three generations. Besides, this whole town has seen its fair shares of ups and downs. But we have been faithful to the Lord, and the Lord will be faithful to us. It's that you can count on. The blessings will come. You'll see. I know. I hope you're right. Outside, the clouds are looking dark. I'm afraid it might snow again. What you thinking, Mama? Oh, nothing, nothing, my sweet girl. Nothing at all. How was your... Well, Rainy Elizabeth Harper, you are a sight. Oh, let me take a look at you. Oh, what happened here? Well, at lunch today, Timmy Dean said he bet me a whole penny that I couldn't jump further than him over the big old dirt pile behind the schoolhouse. <laughs> he said it's because I'm a runt, but I sure got the best of him. I jumped so high. Yes, right into the dirt pile. Really, Mother, it was embarrassing. <laughs> Looking all day as if she'd been wallowing with the pigs. People in town were staring at her on the way over. Really, shouldn't she start acting like a lady? Oh, what do you know about being a lady? Kenzie. I guess I could start acting like... Dorothea. <laughs> Hi, Kinsey. How did you do on the spelling test today? <laughs> <laughs> you stop teasing your brother now. <laughs> what am I going to do with you lot? Listen here. Why don't you go in back and get a nice, fresh gingerbread cookie? I brought some to your daddy this afternoon, and I don't fully feel mind sharing. Yippee, cookies. Get out, Kenzie Horace. No. No. What are you talking about? Put Kenzie Horace in my house. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you can't even open animals, it. Animals, all of y'all. Faith, dear. Uh, uh, one more thing, sweetheart. Yes, um, go easy on your sister, all right? You know, she just, uh, she looks up to you. And, well, dear, things might look a little hard for us coming up this next few days. And... You. Uh, well, just just make sure she gets a good scrub in the sink before she touches that cookie plate. Yes, oh, thank you, sweetheart. Well, Harold, I'm just trying to prepare them for for that Christmas may not be all that they'd hoped it would be this year, and 
Well, you know, she's been hoping to have a new dress to perform in the Christmas festival this year. And, and Lainey, oh, it's all I can do to keep her in anything that doesn't have a hole in the knee. And Kenzie, you know, he's been working so hard with the odd jobs to help out here and there. But lately, you know, I've been seeing that his, his heart look just a little worn. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I'll go see Mr. Harris down at the bank tomorrow about the store payment. Maybe he'll give us a little extra time, it being Christmas and all. Will that make you feel better? <laughs> oh, Howdy. It's, <clears throat> it's getting cold out there. Howdy. Huh? <laughs> Howdy. Hello. What can we do for you today, sir? Well, uh, I'm new in town, and I was hoping that you might be able to point me in the direction of somewhere I could stay for the night. Oh, well, come in. Now warm yourself a bit. Thank you. Nice place you got here. Uh, you make all these? Oh, sure did. Handmade out of the finest lumber. Now, did you say you were looking for a place to stay in town? Sure I am. You know, I heard about your town from some folks uh, up north. Oh. Bethlehem. Seems like a nice place. Oh, well, well Mr. Uh, uh, Pelsnickel. Uh, Nicholas Pelsnickel. Mr. Pelsnickel, hmm? I I'm afraid we don't have a hotel or boarding house in town. Hmm. I was afraid of that. Well, then, uh, best be on my way. Oh. Don't want to take up too much of your time now. Papa, Papa! Kinsey almost ate all the cookies, but I saved some, and this one's especially for you. He looks like Papa Cookie. Oh, he does, does he? Hi! More cookies! Hello, are you here to buy a present for Christmas? You're lucky. We have lots of great things in our shop today. Yes, I can see that. You know what? I think I'll take this one here. I rather like him. I like him too. Would you like a cookie? Mama made them. Are you here for the festival? Lady, <laughs> stop asking the poor man so many questions. Now, a lady... Oh, no, no, no. It's all right. Yes, you know what? I was hoping that I would find something special, but I guess there's no room for me here. Oh, Harold, maybe we should... You know, it's not much, but we'd be happy to let you stay in our bar. Give you a hot meal, too. Junior's an excellent cook. Oh, you yeah. sure it wouldn't be too much trouble now. Oh, we'd be glad to help you any way we can. Folks got to look out for each other. Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren. You, you did, did it, it to me. Matthew 25, 40, straight from the good book. <laughs> well, then, that'd be mighty nice of you. Well, fine, just fine. All right, I'll take this. Here. Well, kids, you uh, bundle up oh, and uh, get, get nice and warm, and it's oh, time to head home. Yep. Kenzie, go ahead and walk with the girls while we close up the shop. Sure thing, Mom. Right. Faith, come on. Yes, dear sister. <laughs> All righty. You all right, dear? Is there something we forgot? <laughs> oh, I was just thinking. We are richly blessed, June. Yes, we are. <laughs> Certainly are. All right. Shall we, Mr. Pell's nickel? Oh, please, call me Nicholas. <laughs> oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. But in the dark sweet night, Looks good. Well, how to do there, Shep? I oh. trust you'll be ready for Bethlehem's annual Christmas festival on time. Yep, just finishing up the last post now, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we'll be ready for the ladies to put their decorations up and banners tomorrow. Well, that's just perfect. Because I got big plans for this town, and frankly, I need to know that you 
and your lumber and grain are up to the task. We got some big things happening in Bethlehem. Say, is uh, old Harper still giving you a hard time about selling his store? <sighs> yeah, he won't budge. But I got it on good authority from Bud Harris at the bank that it's only just a matter of time before he misses his payment. Uh, music to my ears. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> hey, uh, Mr. Mayor, if you don't mind me asking, tell me a little bit more about this plan of yours. Well, let's just say that this year's annual Christmas festival won't just be for the folks of Bethlehem this year. You see, I got an investor coming into town, and well, if he likes what he sees, he may be looking to set up a new hotel right here. Mm -hmm. And a new hotel means a whole lot more new folks coming through this town. Matter of fact, he's even thinking about making Bethlehem a place for rich folks to vacation. Oh, that sounds like a lot of revenue. Sure would be. Might be a mighty fine Christmas for all of us. If you play your cards right, Shep, a bigger lumber and grain makes this town look a whole lot more prosperous now, doesn't it? I know. Tomorrow, you need to go pay Harold Harper another visit. In order for him to sell, he's going to need a little more motivation. How do you mean, sir? Well, first of all, you remind him he's got poor old Junin and, and all them kids to think about. And imagine them kids, destitute and, and out in the cold, if he can't make his payment in time. That would be tragic, wouldn't it? Uh, Here. Shep, why don't you offer him a job at the Lumber and Grain? I'll take it as a favor to yours truly. Matter of fact, I'll put in a good word for you with the investor to make you the sole supplier for all that lumber to build that new hotel. You have a good night now, Shep. You too, Mr. Mayor. Sure is beautiful with all this falling snow out tonight, Papa. And cold. <laughs> <laughs> well, my little bug, it's tradition. Tradition? Yeah, traditions are pretty special in our family. That they are. Oh, we have a wonderful story, Nicholas. So romantic, just like the movies with Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire. Only this one's about our great-grandpa, Elias. He was out hunting in the woods when a terrible storm blew in. Our great-grandma Charlotte was so worried when he didn't come home for three whole days. She was terribly heartbroken and thought he was lost forever. But on the evening of the third night, she saw a shadow on the horizon, limping and practically frozen. There he was, coming back to her. Was it as cold that night as it is now? I'm freezing. Blaney, Santa doesn't come for little girls that interrupt stories. <laughs> Papa, was Great Grandpa Elias a good man? Did Santa bring him presents? Oh, your Great Grandpapa Elias Harper was a good and well-respected man in this town. In fact, he was on the committee that named this town after the very place where Jesus was born. Now, he used to read to my Papa when he was about your age out of this very same Bible as my Papa did to me. And now... I have the proud privilege to read it to you, my dear children, and tonight to Nicholas as well. <laughs> but first, where's your mama with that hot chocolate? I do believe I'm starting to feel old Jack Frost start to knit. Here's <laughs> 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 for the last time. One more second here. All right. Here you go, sweetheart. Thank you, mama. Here for you, Lane, not too hot for my baby. And here you go, extra sweet with extra marshmallows for my boy. And Nicholas is for you. Much obliged. All right, all right, I think we're all cozy now. I think we can start now, dear. Mm -hmm. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus 
decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. And this was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. <laughs> Nicholas, why don't you finish? <clears throat> Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven. And peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby, lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherds' story were astonished. But Mary kept all, thing, all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. I wish I could have been a shepherd on that night. Do you think there were shepherds as small as me there? A small no, as dirty, yes. Oh. <laughs> Stop teasing your sister now. Hey, Ken. Why don't you play that song we sang at church last Sunday? I think it's an appropriate way to end this evening. And this day, Savior has been born. Jesus, he is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign, and you will find a child, and suddenly the sky will fill with ancient choir, singing Gloria, singing this family beyond measure. Be with us now as we want to shine your light. Thank you for Nicholas. Show him the love and bless him as you have us. May we live in your abundant grace. Amen. 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 <laughs>
All right, I think it's time for us to go inside and get ready for bed. We don't want to catch our death out here. <laughs> Nicholas, why don't you uh, come inside and get a couple more blankets? And I want to see you bright and early in the morning because I'm making my famous flapjack eggs and bacon. Well, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Please help Mama and Papa not be worried about the storm and help Casey love the Christmas festival. She does sing awfully nice, and she's way better than that old Betsy at Stanton, who Timmy Dean says sounds like a dying moose. And help Kinsey get his face hairs cut, because Papa says he's starting to look like our old sheep, Mr. Bartholomew. And help me get a new dolly from Santa, because I've been good. Well, mostly good. Oh, and help Mr. and Nicholas stay warm in our barn. Amen. Good night, Jesus. They've got the tree up for the festivities. My father and the other men just chopped it down this morning. Dorothea Simmons, don't be such a ninny. My father, the mayor, said that the tree is just a small part and much grander picture. The Bethlehem Christmas Festival is the best, biggest event of the year. Everyone will be here. Of course, I'll be doing the opening number this year. Oh, boy, you know this can't be good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we all get to sing in the show, Betsy. Your mother said so. She is in charge, isn't she? I isn't that right, Faith? Uh, I do believe she did say everyone has a part, Betsy. Uh, it'll be wonderful, the whole town using her talents to celebrate. <laughs> everyone knows I have the best singing voice in all of Bethlehem. Of course, as daughter of the mayor, I shouldn't have to sing with anyone else. I should sing solo. Yeah, solo, we can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that, Charlie Bean. I'm telling my mother. Mother! Oh. Oh, she really is full of herself. Some Christmas spirit. I hope, I hope Sam puts a lump of coal in her stocking. Now, Dorothea, <clears throat> calm down. The Christmas show will be wonderful. I am excited. Kinsey and the boys are going to play some wonderful songs, mm. and Lainey, Timmy, and Grace will sing, too, and they'll help decorate the tree, and the mayor will say a few words, and mm -hmm. Father will make the manger set look divine, and yeah. as Betsy scales the tree like a rabid raccoon, Kinsey will sweep you up in his arms and carry you off into the sunset. That sounds great. Are you listening? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I better get home and help Mother finish baking for the festivities before we face the wrath of Betsy again. Bye, Faith. Bye. <laughs> All right, well, uh, let's just go ahead and uh, get some of these decorations on the tree happening now. Yeah, looking good cool. there. Good. Hey, Brandon, how you doing? Yes, sir. George, we're all set? <coughs> Looking good? All right. Looks good. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, looking good. Got a little Timmy. Hey, what do we got over here? Harold, a moment of your time, if I may. What can I do for you today, ship? Have you given any more thought about the offer I made for the store? I, I got a big shipment of lumber coming in, and I could use that extra space. My guys can get in there, and they can knock the walls down hey, in no time Wait at a all. minute, ship. Just wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <sighs> I told you. I'm not sinning. I'm going to go see Mr. Harris at the bank, as a matter of fact, today uh, about our loan. Look, Harold. It's Christmas, and I'd hate to see that family of yours out in the cold. 
kids without presents all because of some silly stubbornness. Look, with my offer, you can get Kinsey a new guitar, get the girls new dresses, even fix that leaky roof of yours on the old farm. Why don't you uh, come with me and we'll uh, discuss the details of my offer away from that crowd. But Timothy! Gracie! Laney, I said cookies all over your mouth, and you've been at that cookie Ooh. table. I know you have. You stay away from there. You come over here, and you just help with these decorations now, you hear me? Ooh. Careful now, sweetheart. You just stay over here. <laughs> oh, these children. Well, howdy there. <sighs> I'm Mayor Stanton. I don't believe I've seen you in town before. Nicholas Pels Nichols, a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure. I don't believe I know the name. Pels Nichols. Well. Doesn't ring a bell. And I know most prominent families. Oh, heaven's <laughs> sake. Excuse me, sir. Of course. Y'all all right back here? Oh, Hello, Jim. Oh, thank you. Sure. Just may I oh, yeah. please? Henry. Thank you. Thank you. Henry. <laughs> yes, darling. Darling. Who was that man you were talking to? Oh, says his name's Nicholas Pell's Nichols. Could be a uh, drifter, maybe. Didn't you say that investor would be arriving soon? Well, that's not supposed to be until tomorrow, but uh, I suppose he could have arrived early. Well, Henry, really, didn't you think to ask the bank the man's name that they'd be sending? Well, to be honest, in all this excitement, Tootsie Bell, I just didn't think to ask. <laughs> well, don't just stand there. Take care of the right man. You are. All goodness. right, boys, why don't we say uh, we get this sound check a run through, yeah? We're going to go ahead and run Little Drummer Boy. Let's run it from the top. Brandon, why don't you bring us in? Come on in. Sounds good. Come, they told me, pum 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 pum. A newborn king to see, pum 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 pum. To that E minor, our finest gifts we bring. Pum, pum. To lay before the king, pum 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 pum, pum 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 pum, pum 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 pum. So to honor him, pum 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 pum. Let's go ahead and run uh, verse two. One, two, three, four. Little newborn. All right, okay, all right, guys. Um, sounds great. Uh, you know, why don't we just take a break after that um, and grab some coffee? Have you seen your father? I simply must talk to you about my solo for the show. Have you seen yes, now what I envision will be right here. Lights everywhere. This Not needs to be up much, no, much higher, higher, higher. No one else needs to be oh, here. Oh, Mr. Hopper, uh, Harold. Oh, there you are. I've been looking for you everywhere. I must insist you come to our home and pick up the manger and begin work on it immediately. If it's going to adorn our stage, it must be perfect. I believe it's somewhere in the attic. I trust you'll pick it up today. Oh, yeah. oh good. Kinsey can pick it up right now if you would like, Mr. Oh. Hopper. I know right where it is, Mother. Mm -hmm. All right, you can do just that. We'll, we'll send him over to your house, uh, Mrs. Stanton, and pick it up, if that's all right with you. <gasps> oh, all right. Now, no dilly-dallying, Betsy. Yes, Mother. <laughs> Kinsey, son, yes, I'm here. <clears throat> I want you to go over to Stanton's and pick up the manger. Mm -hmm. Take Betsy with you. Uh, she knows where to find it. Sure thing, Pa. So swell. Now, Ken, as soon as we get the manger and bring it back to your father's shop, we should really go over my solo while you'll play your guitar divinely in accompaniment. Of course, it will have to be several times over and over. I want to captivate the audience just like Shirley Temple. Sounds riveting. <laughs> 
Carol, well, what was all that about? You all right, dear? Oh. Here you go. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm, Kenzie's gone to get the manger. So I'm going to be working on that until late tonight. Okay. Why don't you take the girls and go on home? Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. I'll be along later. Right. Say, Nicholas, mm -hmm. would you mind terribly helping me with the manger repair? <laughs> I could uh, make it worth your while, and I sure could use you. Of course. It would be my pleasure. You know, I'm pretty handy with woodworking myself. Oh, perfect! <laughs> Lady Faith, where are y'all girls? Where are y'all? Oh, y'all there you oh, are. Right here, mother. Is it time for the big show yet? Laney, that's not until tomorrow, silly. Oh. Now, listen here. Your father and Nicholas are going to stay at the shop to work a little later than usual, so it's just us going home. Okay. Let's go. Bye. Bye, girls. Bye. 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 <laughs> you are just so, so much. Something on your mind, Harold? Uh, I was just thinking about this town and my role in it. Hmm? You ever get so tangled up thinking about your future, Nicholas? Trying to understand God's plan for your life. Doing his will and, and following his path. And you're still not sure if you're doing the right thing. Well, Harold, it seems to me that if a man is reading his word and Following God's laws, then he's doing all right. <laughs> you know, God works in his own time and not ours. You know, a fella could get into a heap of trouble if he's not in his whispering spot and listening for God's voice. I, I think I may have made a terrible mistake tonight, Nicholas. Oh, yeah? I may have let my whole family down. Mm. You see, I told Chef Randall a final and firm no. I would not tell him the business. But I'm not sure how it's going to affect June and the kids. Pa, you haven't let us down. You are the finest example of what a man should be. I mean, how many times have you told us that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God? Mm. You've taught us to love God and obey his will. You don't just tell us, you show us. Um. I could not be more proud of you than I am in this very moment. <laughs> when did you become such a man? Hmm? Why don't you take the, the manger back inside the shop and before the snow gets any worse? Sure thing. No, no, no. You go on ahead. Go get the paints and tools ready. I'll be right along. Thanks. Well, there you are, Pelsnickel. Been looking all over for you. I trust you'll be staying with us tonight. I well, believe you'll be interested to hear the plans I have for Bethlehem. And I do know. believe that if you just give us a chance, you'll want to lay your roots down right here. I really and must. Try the wife's cooking. Sneaks to the ribs. No, Come I. On. Off you get. Uh, all, all Let's right. Let's go. Slow down, you're gonna get your dress dirty again. I don't care if I get my dress dirty. Oh, hush, now hush, would you just hush? Your father's probably starving to death, so let's get going. Yeah, Faith, father's probably starving. Woohoo! Morning, how's my guys? Harold, what's wrong? Uh, I, I, I don't know how I'm gonna tell what's, Mayor Stanton. What's happened? See, I told Kenzie take the manger and bring it inside the shop, but then Nicholas said he would do it, and, and now Nicholas is gone, and, and so is the manger. I mean, what? I don't think he'd steal it, but I don't know. Well, what you gonna do? Well, are you in trouble, Father? Is Mayor Stanton gonna put you in jail, Papa? Kinsey, wake up, wake up! Papa's going to jail! Uh, what time is it? Who's going to jail? No, 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 no one's going to jail. But June, what am I going to do? How am I going to tell Mayor Stanton that a decades-old manger is just upped and vanished? Well, 
Well, you're just going to have to tell him the truth is all. You're just going to have to get it out in the open and tell him that Nicholas is gone and absconded with it and we'll just have to do without it this year. Oh, pray he has mercy. Well, should I call the sheriff or Mayor Stanton? Uh, oh, this will truly be our descent into societal ruin. Oh, brother. What does societal ruin mean? It means we will be the laughing stock of Bethlehem, lady. That's what it means. Hey, not now. I don't want to be the laughing stock of Bethlehem. Where, where is it? What? 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 Where's my guitar? Oh, uh, no, oh. not again. How am I supposed to play in the show oh, tonight no. if I don't have my guitar? Oh, oh, if it's in back. Oh, oh, maybe. Hell, oh. We better call to get the sheriff and ma uh, the mayor Stanton. Yes. I think we've been robbed. Oh. It, it must have been in the back when we went to get the paintster for the manger set. Yeah. Son, I am so sorry. Oh. Should we ask Jesus to help us find Mr. Nicholas and Kinsey's guitar? Out of the mouths of babes, huh? <laughs> yes. Let us pray. Dear Lord. We leave these things in your hands that you might be with us now. Lord, I ask you, bless Nicholas. I don't know what's going on in that man's life. Paper, paper, Charles Limber and his family are leaving the United States to England. Paper, paper. Here, I'll take one of those, my boy. Anything good? Nah, not today. Yeah. Here, girl, educate yourself. Can you believe the nerve? He just ups and leaves without saying anything. It's not polite. It's plain rude. Now, Matilda, calm down. We'll get to the bottom of this later. Mm -hmm. Pull yourself just together, woman. You have appearances to keep up, and look, here come the Harpers. Right. Good morning, Harpers. Hi. How are you this fine morning? <laughs> I trust you've completed the manger set. Shall we go to your shop and see it? Well, uh, Mr. Mayor, it seems that we have a bit of a problem. I'll oh. say. Seems like that old Mr. Nicholas Pelt-Nickel. Pelt-Nickel, Betsy. Pelt-Nickel has run off without even eating breakfast or saying goodbye to the family. Strange. Daddy, did we check the silverware? Oh, Betsy. Betsy. No, well, she might be on to something. Mm -hmm. The manger set and Kenzie's guitar seem to be gone as well. No. And he's a thief as well. Well, I Betsy and me, <laughs> darling, Angel, this is a matter for the adults, dear. <laughs> Why don't you kids go on in the store and enjoy candy on me oh, while the really adults really talk? Yippee! Father, I'm really not feeling it. Candy, please. A can candy, I mean a candy. <laughs> Can you believe it? Seems like that old Mr. Nicholas tells Nicholas nothing more than a ba vagabond bread liner who's using my father for nothing more than a roof over his head and a good meal. Okies have no sense of decency. No, man. I bet my father will have Sheriff Brown out looking for him, and when they find him, what? He'll just see how kind the town of Bethlehem will treat his kind. Betsy, that is undoubtedly oh, say. Mr. Nicholas is a wonderful man and has never given us reason to doubt him. I don't believe he would just up and leave without an explanation. Something must have happened to him. You really think so, Sam? I do. Despite what you think, Betsy, there's got to be more to his story. Bori, wouldn't it be a perfect headline for the paper? Hey, watch it, Timmy. Hey, oh, okay, come on. Let's go. 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 let Nicholas, yeah? we thought you had uh, left. Oh. Yeah, what's the I, meaning of I this? Hell's Nicholas? I see. Are you returning to the scene of the crime? No. No, 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 no. Well, you see, I was about to get the manger set when Mayor Stanton insisted that I go home with him. I had it in my hand, so I brought it back this morning at first light. I remember seeing tools and paints in your shop there, Mr. Harper, so... I took it there and fixed it up myself to be helpful to you, Harold. And then I remembered hearing that Kinsey's guitar wasn't working so well, and with the Christmas festival coming up, I oh, thought my. I might fix that up oh. as well. Oh. Oh. Gosh, this is as good as new. Thanks, Mr. Nick. 
I'm sorry if I caused any trouble. It weren't my intention. I just wanted to show the town of Bethlehem the same kindness that you all have shown me. Especially you, Harold and June. I've been traveling from town to town, and, well, you all and your children, of course, well, y'all have been like a ray of sunshine to me. How could I feel like a poor man? Oh, Nicholas, how kind of you to say. <laughs> Did you say poor man? Yeah. Mayor, didn't you say yeah. this was the investor, the one that was going to build the hotel and make investor. us all rich? Well, look, see here now, okay? Hey, investor? Is that why you've been trying to push me out, push shit? Out, uh, hey, push Henry? Out. Mayor, oh, Mayor oh, did no. say if I expanded my business and impressed the investor, I would be the sole supplier for the new lumber you project. Now, shit. Hey, that's, uh, <laughs> I didn't know. Henry, how could you? Well, look, y'all, I was just trying to do right by the town. Expansion is good for all of us. Oh, but at what cost, Henry? Who else you gonna push out before there's no one left? Oh, Your friends? Your family? Yeah. We're not going to be Just let me explain. Oh, you so you know me, Tyler. You know me since you were a child. I mean, seriously. Do his own hometown. I need that contract. I don't think this is what the angels had in mind when they sang to the shepherds on the night of Jesus' birth. No. No, dear, it wasn't. Do you think this is what Mary and Joseph felt like when the townspeople turned them away at the end? Oh, Lainey. Lainey, it's okay. Uh, think of the one who did say yes. The one who made room for them in a stable. Imagine, Lainey, what it was like. Jesus all cozy among the animals and the people that loved him the most. People couldn't wait to see him. And imagine the wise men. They followed the biggest, brightest star just to get where he was. And guess what? He was there when they needed him the most. Like how Mr. Nicholas saw the light on in the window of Papa's shop. He followed the light too, mm -hmm. right when he needed it. <laughs> For a miracle, heart longs for a little bit of hope. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. The child prays for a peace on earth, and she's calling now from a sea of hurt. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. With the tears of a mother, a baby's cry is the sound of love. Come down, come down, Emmanuel. Here's a song for the suffering. Here's the sigh of the Prince of Peace has come. He has come, Emmanuel.
Well, I sure am sorry, Mr. Pelznickel. I, I guess I don't know what's come over me. Uh, Mr. Pelznickel? What? Nicholas? I'm sorry for what I said earlier. No hard feelings, Henry? No hard feelings, sir. And I am sorry, truly, everyone. And, and as your mayor, it's my sacred duty to protect the town of Bethlehem from, well, from people like me. <laughs> and, and I will be honored if, if y'all would forgive me. Of course. Of course. <laughs> sure. Yes. I'm sorry, Dorothea. It seems to me that although I don't see any reason why, Kenzie likes you, and, well, I guess I'm all right with that. Thanks. Oh, heavens, look, everyone, it's getting on in the day, and if we don't finish these final preparations for the Christmas festival, well, we won't be having one for the first time in nearly 20 years. So we need to, listen, y'all, we need to all of us come together right now if we're going to finish these preparations in time. Now, are you with me? Yes! Yes. Good. Good. Now, Harold and... Kenzie, could you help me with the manger and the, add the musical equipment? Of course. Sure, thank you. Just this a little bit more. He tries. Make sure nobody trips and falls. Sure. I can come along. Sit there. 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 I'm gonna go help the children with the pot now. Lainey, you stay with Faith. Yes, Mama. I know. I'll practice my vocal run. <laughs> oh, no. Go. No. 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 Me. 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 Is that over? I think she's off. Okay. Oh, Faith. Look, there's presents. This one says to Lainey Harper, and that one says to you. And this one says for June and Harold. I wonder what it is. I don't think it would be too bad that we open these now, do you? Yeah. Yeah. My dolly, oh, isn't she lovely? Oh, Mr. Pelsnickel, mm. it's beautiful. Come on. Let's go show Mama her present, Faith. Here, what's up, Charlie? Oh, oh. Oh, My goodness, I don't think you damaged me. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna play after that. Well, didn't you oh, Merry Christmas? So oh, I'm the best you missed. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. oh. Thank you, Bay Lou. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> All right, guys, it's time to get ready. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> You're telling me. Beautiful. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as the mayor of Bethlehem, I would like to personally welcome each and every one of you for coming to our annual Christmas festival. <laughs> All right. Now, I trust you've enjoyed the banquet put on by the good ladies of Bethlehem. Oh, yeah. Wasn't that good? <laughs> well, without further ado, let's get on to our other festivities. Now, let's give a great big cheer for our very own Grace Dean, Timmy Dean, and Lainey Harper. And country shepherd, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. The glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, The fear not, behold, I'll bring you some tidings of great joy, to be all people. Unto you this born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, which will be a sign unto you. And will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel the multitude of the heavenly hosts,
themselves praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And this piece did the Lord win. Let's give it up for the children one more time. They did great. I am so proud of y'all. And now I would like to welcome to the stage a very great performer. Betsy, will you join us on stage, sing your solo? No, 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 we're not going to sing the book of Titus. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> well, it seems, folks, that Will, with all that practice and Betsy's been doing, she's come down with laryngitis. Oh, no. No. I know. No. I know. It's a shame, really. But don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Because instead, let's welcome to the stage for her debut, Dorothea. Why don't you come up here and sing with us? Bring love. 
And it brings me pleasure to welcome back to the stage my little sister, Lainey. Baby Jesus, a poem. A virgin birth, a manger bed, a lowly stable to lay his head. A humble beginning for anyone. It doesn't seem fitting for God's only son, but God has a plan to redeem me and you. Salvation through Jesus, Jesus offers life afresh and anew. All right. And now, to end our show, we'd like to sing a song that is near and dear to our family. So, Mama and Papa, would you like to join us? A family hiding from the storm Found no place at the keeper's door It was for this a child was born To save a world so cold and hollow being town did not know that lying in a manger low, a savior king who had no home has come to heal our sorrows. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God? Write his story. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to write his story? Cause you can come as you are, but it may set you apart when you make room. song and we would just love it if y'all would join in with us and not just this crowd but you out there as well we're gonna sing be thou my vision so let's clap those hands let's raise those voices and let's sing here we go one two three four be thou my vision oh lord of my
Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. I would like to thank each and every one of you for coming tonight. Wasn't that so good? <laughs> well, if you could kindly join my wife, Matilda, and I, the ladies out in the town have prepared a dessert reception for us over down at the church hall. And I sure can't wait to dig into that pecan pie. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I cannot begin to tell you how proud I am of all of you. <laughs> Bethlehem sure is shining brightly with all my little stars. Thank you, Mama. Are you proud too, Papa? Uh, Lainey, I could not be more proud of you all. <laughs> you remind your old Pop what it means to be a light in this town and remain focused on what matters. Jesus, mm -hmm. surely he is with us, especially tonight. Truly, our rewards are up in heaven. Matthew 6. 19 through 21. <laughs> but for now, shall we partake in some earthly treasures? Just I do believe your mama has made those cookies that only she can. No, <laughs> Harold, don't tease. Yippee! <laughs> May I? Let's go get those cookies. Oh, we're going to ruin my new dress. Oh, look at that princess. <laughs> I think we've buddy. got us a wedding that's coming up here. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> precious. <laughs> Oh, oh, Harold, uh, uh, Lainey handed me th this to you, and I, I have no idea what it is. I haven't read it. Huh. Yeah, for Harold and Judy. Dear Harper family, thank you for the kindness you've shown to me, a complete stranger. After my folks died, I left the family business and began wandering from town to town, trying to find meaning in my life. I'd given up on almost everything and everyone as each town had been more selfish and self-absorbed than the last. Oh, that's sweet. Until a bright light from a window of your small shop oh, caught my we eye. Talk about our shop. <laughs> oh. I found comfort with you all there. I heard the love of God on your porch through song and little lady's prayer. I found purpose in working alongside you like I was part of your family. Oh. I've learned how God and family mean so much, and running from them will do nothing. I decided to quit running mm -hmm. and go back to the family business with my sister. Oh, well, that's good. I wanted to thank you and give you as much as you had given me. Mm -hmm. I've paid off your debt to the bank mm -hmm. and plan on visiting you all when I get back into town. What? Have a very Merry Christmas. <gasps> Nicholas Pelsnickel, Pelsnickel Toys <gasps> CEO. Oh! Wasn't that good? It just reminds us again how important the Lord is in our lives. You know, as you read the Gospels, you, you find out a couple of things. Number one, that God gave his precious gift, Jesus. It was announced to the angel, uh, by the angels to the, some of the outcasts of society, the shepherds on the hillside first. So isn't that amazing? that God would make that announcement to somebody that's on the lowest end of the totem pole. And yet, as time goes on, there would be the wise men who would come and visit him too. So you have from the lowest in society to the highest in society all coming to see Jesus. Why? Because he's the son of the living God. Because as we would find out, and, and uh, as he grew and ultimately gave his life and then raised three days later, he is the Savior of the world. So what the angel was announcing, the Messiah has been born, truly was and came to fruition. He is the Messiah, the one by which we, those who put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, will have eternity with him. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing that God would take care of everybody from the lowest to the highest and say, if you want life, not only here in this world, abundant and free, but life eternal, come to me. That's what he said. And that's why we do what we do here today. We do it for his sake.
that through somehow, some way, some word, some, some smile, some song, that if somebody in this place would say, you know, I'm not right where I need to be with the Lord, that this would be the time and this would be the place. Would you bow your heads with me? If you're here and you felt that tug on your heart, that there's something missing in your life, and then maybe this would be a good day to, as the Bible says, today is the day of salvation. That for you, you need to make that choice. You need to make that change in your life. And if by chance this would be that day and you're feeling that sense, would, would you do me a favor with every eye closed and every head bowed? If that's you today, and I believe there are a few in this house that need a Savior need the source of what truly is the Christmas joy. You need Jesus. Would you lift your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. Is there anybody here? One. Any others? Come on. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Anybody else? If you raised your hand, I want you to know that in a simple prayer like the one I'm going to lead you in, if you pray it in belief, your name will be written in the what we know as the Lamb's Book of Life. Your sins will be forgiven. Hallelujah. But that's God's part. Your part is to follow after him from this day forward. Would you pray this prayer with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you that you gave the greatest gift of all, and his name is Jesus. I surrender my life to you, Lord Jesus. I ask you to be the Lord of my life. Forgive me of my sin. And carry my life and be my Lord every day of my life till I meet you face to face on heaven's shores. I trust you, Lord, to be my Savior. From this day forward, I am yours. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want you after service to come talk to me or talk to Pastor Tim. He's the one raising his hand right there. Because we want to pray with you. Because this is a serious moment, amen? amen? By any chance, just as a testimony, how many of you at one time in your life and you continue to live that way have prayed that simple prayer before? So you're joining a great group of people, aren't you? Amen? amen. Well, we want to do something here before we, there truly are some good things in the kitchen. We need to welcome this, uh, the, the team back up here, don't we? And we, we need to recognize them. So would you just welcome them back up here? Well done. Well done. God bless you all. Why don't we stand together? And I know she doesn't like this, but you, would you thank Heather for all that she's done here?
she pr she made me promise not to bring her up here, but I she didn't make me promise not to do that. So it's been good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. If you enjoyed it and want to see it again or bring somebody with you, we're back here tonight at six o'clock. Please come on back because uh, we got a whole lot of goodies yet to share with them tonight. So uh, let's just have a great Christmas time for the next couple weeks. Amen. Father God, thank you for this time together. Thank you for the lives that have been touched and have been transformed in the, in, the immediate, in the immediate prayer, Lord God, as they prayed. Their lives have been changed for the better. Hallelujah. So God, help us to go out of this place rejoicing, rejoicing in the fact that our Savior, the Messiah, has been born. Blessed be your name. Bless now our time of fellowship. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you tonight, 6 o'clock.